Our Hebrew lesson comes today from Psalm 18, verses 1 and 2, and 28 and 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And our epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Christ Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thanks be to God for the people of God. The Gospel of Luke, we are looking at the Gospel, chapter 19, verses 29 through 37. And by the way, if you can't hear me, let me know with your thumb. Uh, I will turn the sound up, but we want to make sure that everyone can hear on Sunday mornings, and I know sometimes it's difficult because my level of voice varies on occasion, and I'm not as loud-spoken as I possibly could be, but that's why we have, he's putting a thumb up, that's why we have the sound system that we do, that we can crank your pastor up. Didn't know you could turn your pastor on, did you? As Jesus came to Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he gave two disciples a task. He said, Go into the village over there. When you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If someone asks, why are you in untying it? Just say, its master needs it. Those who he had sent found it exactly as he had said. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, its master needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their clothes on the colt, and lifted Jesus upon it. As Jesus rode along, they spread their clothes on the road. As Jesus approached the road leading down from the Mount of Olives, the whole throng of his disciples began rejoicing. They praised God with a loud voice because of all the mighty things they had seen. They said, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, scold your disciples. Tell them to stop. This was his answer. I tell you, if they were silent, the stones would shout. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I've known a really a few good rocks in my day. You know, when I was a young lady, we would go rock skipping in the local creek that was out behind our house. But you had to find just exactly the perfect rock in order to skim it across the top of the water. I was never really good at that. My brother could just pick up any old rock, you know, like one of those I have in my bucket and he could make it just sing across that water. And I could pick up, I'd try and copy what kind of, I'd watch what kind of rock he picked up to make sure that I had one that was just as good and mine just always sank. And he said it's in the wrist. It's how you flick your wrist. Well, you know, I can flick my wrist to a tune. I can do a rock concert. That would be all right. But here Jesus was telling the people, you know, when they said, your disciples are too loud, your, your people are getting too anxious, they're, they're too noisy, they're too excited about who you are and what you're doing. 
Oh, that we would have that in the church today. All that sound, all the clamor, all the noise of being so excited about Jesus Christ that we can't contain ourselves. Do any of you feel that this morning? Uncontainable? Well, Jesus said, if my disciples were quiet, if the people along the streets were quiet, well, then the rocks would have to get up and they'd be just as loud. I think I'd rather have people singing than a bunch of rocks making noise. This morning, I want to talk to you about some of the people that were on the scene on that particular day. Along with the disciples, there was quite a horde of Roman soldiers that were all called on duty because they were afraid of all the noise coming down the streets. I mean, can you imagine if you had a house along the Mount of Olives Road and people were taking and cutting down your palm trees and laying them out on the road? That could coincide a riot, don't you think? But the Roman soldiers stood back and they simply watched and they listened. These people weren't getting out of hand. They weren't getting so carried away or, or rioting. They were in a parade. They were singing loud hosannas. They were praising God. And the Roman soldiers just didn't understand what's all the hoopla about? Just what is it about this man Jesus? that makes him such a great person. I mean, isn't he the son of a carpenter? He's an, he's an ordinary man who really didn't, you know, start out as much of anything. Why, I can imagine one of the Roman soldiers might have even gone to Nazareth to the carpenter's shop and said, I need a table and chairs for my wife for our anniversary. And Jesus might have been one of them that put some of those legs on that table or the spools on the chair and sand it and honed it down. And here he was, making such a big production. Well, here's what one of the soldiers had to say. I was stationed in Jerusalem that day, in the capital. It wasn't, you know, the right place for me. They have this strange God who, who gave them that rock. For them, it's holy ground. So it's the seat of their king, the center of their wealth. They cared about that temple in Jerusalem. It was a special temple to them, the promise that it remembers. I know little about gods. He says, you know, he worshipped one of the other gods of the Roman people, Mithras. Um, the legion's code was more important. This Jesus person, I mean, we always spoke to a god that was, you know, just a rock in front of us, a statue. But this one was different. He says their homeland and, and Jerusalem are proof to them of God's choice of them as unique and special people. Every one of you is a unique and special person, don't you think? Every one of you is created in God's own image. Uniquely different from one another. And yet we are all part of one great big family the family of God. Their celebration of freedom was a time of unrest. They crowded into the city. They won freedom from slavery. They are a strange people. And now here we are in the midst of this Passover celebration. When they remember the blood that was shed on the doorpost and how their house was spared, the Jewish rulers of the city are no more pleased about all these people coming to town than we Roman soldiers are. Our informants told us that the prophet was coming, that he was healing the sick along the way, and there were rumors that he even raised people from the dead. Now imagine that, raising people from the dead. Isn't that the silliest thing you've ever heard? Honestly, it's not so silly. It's what happened. We had a joke that he, we would provide him with more opportunities to exercise his power. When he arrived that first day of the week, everybody really loved him. The leaders feared and hated him. We watched. He came riding in on that little donkey, a beast of burden. 
he came down through the Kidron Valley, up the slope toward the massive gates. The crowd grew with every step the donkey took, bobbing its head along the way. Oh, well, that reminds me. Have you ever heard about a donkey? Anybody ever had a donkey? We didn't have one, but Grandpa did. And Grandpa would tell us, whatever you do, do not get right in front of that donkey. And, of course, you know, children, why not, Grandpa? Well, if you get right in the face of that donkey, he's liable to just come forward and bowl you right over. And I didn't believe him. And so I got right in front of that donkey, and I grabbed a hold of his ears. I wanted to tell him something. That donkey did not like my touching his ears. And he just very quickly dropped his head and just pushed forward with all his might. And I was sitting on the ground. There weren't palm branches for me to land on either. And I got up and I looked at him and I said, what did you do that for? And he just shook his head like, I, just because I could. But now that was one of those donkeys that my dad used to hitch up to a single blade little plow. Some of you farmers know what that's like. And my father would get behind that donkey and we had about an acre of garden and he would use that old donkey and that single bladed plow to dig up my mom's garden. And my mom said that was the best thing for her garden because along the way the donkey would make deposits. <laughs> and we would just turn the soil over and include those deposits in with whatever we were growing. This was a brand new colt, one that had never been ridden. Now, any of you know anything about horses or donkeys, and you try and get on the back of one of them that's never been ridden, um, you're going to go for a loop. You know, I've done some green breaking of horses in my day. I barrel raced in my teenage years, and I can remember going to church camp one year when we had this horse who was bright red, flame red, skin, beautiful horse. His name was Spirit. And um, they said, we need someone who is a seasoned rider to, it was one of those trail rides, you know, one horse noses up behind the other horse in front of you. Spirit was not that kind of horse. He did not nose up behind anybody. He wanted to be in the lead. And unbeknownst to me, when I was getting ready to ride that horse, um, one of the sons of the owner of the ranch where we were came up behind spirit and snapped him on the rump and that sent spirits we were in wyoming you know plateaus um we just took out across and i met up with everybody at the end of the trail ride <laughs> the horse knew how to get back home we just did it in a really fast roundabout up the valley down through the gully way and so I was sitting at the corral, and everybody got back and still sitting on the horse. And he looked at me, and he says, you stayed with it? Yeah, yeah, what was I going to do? Let the horse run me off? You know? This was a green broke, not even green broke, but a colt that they put him on. And the colt never shifted. It simply accepted Christ on its back, as if it knew this was the one thing that it was called to do in its lifetime. They stripped branches from the trees and waved the palm fronds as they shouted. And he sat on that bobbing donkey in the middle of all the noise and energy and watched the city as his mount climbed the hill. This soldier could see him coming from a great distance. He knew there was something different about him from other prophets that they had seen. He had a destination to come through town. This was a day of celebration, a day when Jesus said, if we became quiet, the rocks would cry out. I want you to remember Palm Sunday as a day when you are one of those rocks and it is your responsibility to cry out, to tell people who Jesus is. Easter bunnies are fine, Easter baskets, Easter eggs, 
All of those things are all well and good. But we know that resurrection is about Jesus Christ, a living Lord, who rode in at the beginning of the week with everyone praising him, singing loud Hosanna. But by the end of that same week, they all cried out, crucify him, and turned him over so that he could complete the job that God called him to do. Because Christ is alive, we too are alive. So I want you to leave today knowing that every one of you is one of those loudmouth rocks. And I want you to open your mouth and tell people what Christ has done for you and your loved ones and invite people to come and find out what Christ can do for them. We do have thir- well, worship on Wednesday or Thursday night, um, Monday Thursday service here in the cha- in the sanctuary at seven. Good Friday service. Our confirmation students are going to be participating in that on Friday evening uh, with a candle lighting service, and so we invite you to be a part of that. Again, it was not in your bulletin this morning. Six thirty at Gulig Park by the little round pavilion there. We invite you to come and sing praises on Sunday morning and come back and have breakfast. Go forth and rock on. Amen. I invite now our ushers to come as we...